One, two, three. Well, hello there, shrimplets. Welcome to Mark Shrimp Tanks. In today's video, right, we are going to go over three essentials that I think are pretty necessary in a shrimp tank for them to be successful, right? So stick around. All right, guys, so these are going to be in no certain order you can they can one could be number three and three could be number one it doesn't really matter but they are i would say they're pretty essential and uh, let's just get on with it will we so in at number one in our hypothetical list would be moss right you want to get moss into your shrimp tanks because moss provide great 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 surface area for microorganisms microorganisms and things like bacteria and stuff to live on right and if you can get all that grown in your tank guess what shrimp are going to like they're going to love to live in your tank and they're going to multiply and breed and whatever else, right? So let me show you guys. Don't take anyone's word for it. Just, just let's uh, look at the tanks and we'll see what is actually in there, right? So if you can get it, Java moss is probably the most common one because it is quite easy to get, right? But in my tank specifically, I think I have erect moss. Don't laugh at the back there. I think I have erect moss and it, yeah, it's just grown all over the place for me. Uh, so let's have a little look in my tanks and you'll see what I mean, right? So up there, <laughs> there's like two tanks that are just absolutely jam-packed full of moss. And yeah, we're going to have a little look, guys. If you see like a weird blurring effect here, I'm not sure what that is, if it's the light not in sync with my camera or whatever. But um, yeah, you can see here, tons of moss. You can see why this gets its, its name erect moss. Here, you see it? Up here, grows straight up. And... Yeah, the shrimp love it. Look how many shrimp I have in this tank. They're growing like the clappers. Breeding like the clappers, I should say. They love it. Or should I say they like it? Look at them swimming around. <laughs> yeah, so we've got lots and lots of moss in here. This is the tank, guys, where I've actually added moss. And I've added a little bit of fresh soil in here, right? So what will happen in here? This tank looks like it's not doing so well. This moss at the back here and the moss here will start to take over the tank and I know this for sure because this tank did exactly the same thing. This this one here was uh, covered. I saw that banding there, I'll have to see what that is. You see it, the banding, the black line going up and down? Um, yeah, so this tank will start to grow like the clappers. There's actually a lot of baby shrimp in here also. Moss, again, Poseidons. If you can't get moss, use what you can. As I would recommend, you get something like Poseidon's or Sawasar tongue or just something that's going to have uh, grow well and cover a lot of area. I mean, you can even use hornwort as well, but hornwort can go the other way as in grow too much. But um, yeah, hornwort is good if you're, if you're keeping on top of your uh, maintenance with shrimp tanks. But um, yeah. So here's a good example of a tank that I didn't add moss to and it got loads of um, algae and then I added moss later and the, and the moss is actually starting to catch up at the back. Moss, moss, moss is a must, moss. So you can see a growing trend guys in my room. Right, so I have it in all my tanks. This is, it actually has moss in here as well. You just can't see it through that green water. But if you look at my last video, this water was actually pea green. Now you can almost see through it. Right, so look at this tank up here. This is where I get my supply of moss in here. And we started this tank uh, probably about three months ago. So guys, if you want some tips on moss, how to grow it, make sure it is the main plant in the tank and there's nothing else in there that can compete with it. And it will grow like this, like the clappers, right? So I didn't start with a lot of moss in this tank here, the one next to it. And it's got a little bit of string algae in it. But what happens, guys, is the moss will start to take over the tank and all your algae that is in there will disappear, right? Because they just can't compete with the volume of moss like this in our wee tanks. Right? So I do have it everywhere. Have it everywhere. And this tank's quite lovely with moss. And that looking lovely, guys. So yeah, so I love my moss. That is one that you should most definitely, definitely have in your tanks. Just finished my coffee there. Uh, so the second thing, guys, I would recommend that you have in your tanks is some kind of driftwood, right? So you can use most hardwoods, I think, I do believe, right? And the generic one is Malaysian uh, driftwood. 
And um, I think with Malaysian driftwood, it's just a generic term that people actually add on to. And I don't think it is Malaysian driftwood a lot of the time, but you can use most hardwoods in a tank. Like for example, guys, I've used apple uh, wood in a tank before and it lasted for years. So you want to avoid all the softwoods because of your high chance of killing your shrimp if you put softwoods into the tank, like pine and all that rubbish. Don't, yeah, don't, don't even collect it yourself, guys, unless you really know what you're doing, right? So driftwood, what are, are its benefits? Well, it starts to decompose just like our uh, soils and whatever else in the tank and yeah, your shrimp love it. They like it again because it starts to provide food for them. And guys, I do apologize if I stutter sometimes. I just, I'm sick of trying to make like a thousand videos all at once and, you know, edit all this stuff. Now, I, I, this is who I am. I, I, I stutter and whatever else. Tangent smart, don't go off on one. You're talking about driftwood. Right, so they provide a plethora of surface area that is a food zone for things like bacteria and microorganisms to feed on, right? So if you have that again, then you will have your places for your shrimp to like and love and feed on, right? So let's see, do I have it in my tanks? I do, I, ha I probably have it in most of my tanks, actually. But in a lot of cases, it's probably going to be hard to see. I think this tank is, is absolutely filled with, with driftwood, but it's just very hard to see at the back. Over here, you see there's driftwood in there as well. Right, so the types of driftwood that I've used in the past have been your generic uh, uh, Malaysian driftwoods. Uh, you can also use stuff like chola wood or cola wood or whatever you want to call it. Guys, leave me a comment in the comment section below. Tell me how you pronounce that because everybody says a different thing. I think it's uh, choya wood. Is it choya, cola or chola? My God, so many different names. And uh, yeah, look at this guy doing here. Look at me. It's, I think there's even wood in there as well, right? So you've got to provide things for your your shrimp to gnaw on and lick and graze and feed on and whatever else because yeah, that is how they are in the wild, right? If you go to any stream, what's it full of? It's full of wood, right? So that is an essential. Get yourself some wood in the tanks. And or the next thing, which leads us on to this thing here and I have it in all my tanks. You should too if you want to breed tons and tons of shrimp and that is leaves. I have leaves in every single tank here. Every single tank. A little bit cola wood there. Cola choya. Argue with yourselves in the comment section below. I have it in every single tank guys. And the way you want to do this is you want to conveyor belt it into your tanks over time. Right? So you want to start with one fresh leaf one day. You want to let the microorganisms and bacteria and fungi all do their jobs on it and produce biofilm for your shrimp to lap up and lick in, eat and whatever else. Right? And when you start to see holes in it, chuck another leaf in there. Right? And the way I like to do it as well is I like to put all my leaves into a bucket and I like to soak them in hot water for a day before I use them. So it makes kind of like a tea. And I like to, uh, not a lot of people will like this. What I'm going to say is I get rid of that water. Because, I don't know about you guys, right? I, I just don't like the way brown water looks. Because a lot of the time it will be brown and yellowish. And that's not what I want to see in my tanks. I want my tanks to be crystal clear. I think that might be to do with me having partially... I'm almost gone blind, guys, in a nutshell. Right, so the clearer a tank is, the better it is for me to see. Right, so off the top of my head, right, the ones that I have used that work well are all brown leaves. Right, so I have used banana leaves. I've used green leaves, uh, green banana leaves as well. I've used brown banana leaves in my tank right now, as you'll see. I even have them in my Opa Uli tank here, which is doing fantastically well. Look how many shrimp are in here. We have walnut leaves in here as well. Walnut leaves. Hello, billions of shrimp. Look at all the babies they're having in here. I have them in all my tanks, guys. And you can see a common theme here, right, in, in with shrimp is that you want them to have surface area for stuff to grow on for them to munch on. Right? So that is it in a nutshell. And let's just add this to the end as well. If you have um, an active soil, these things are not 100% necessary because your active soil is basically made up of compressed plant matter which could be 
uh, leaves, bark, whatever else, whatever's fallen off, down and decayed and whatever, right, is basically your soil, right? So it's not 100% necessary for um, active soil tanks, but I think it helps with baby shrimp, especially the leaves, because I think they provide cover and structure and things for baby shrimp to kind of like uh, hang around and be on. And yeah, that is what works for me, right? Because you see here, look at all these like baby shrimp. They all love like being on the leaves. That is where the food is grown as all this is like melting down into nothing. The size of this walnut leaf. You see, shrimp are all happy. I'm doing well. So yeah, if you like this type of content, then please guys, leave a like because these are tips that will help you breed tons and tons of shrimp, right? And I'll see you all in the next one, right? Happy shrimp giving, guys. Love you all. Bye.